When I was little, I was taught that we should be ready to give our lives for our family. But when father took control, this philosophy changed. Father said that every one of us is important, and we have to value our own lives, be our strongest selves, and stand on our own two feet in this world. <sighs> but actually, all of that's much harder than just following orders. <sighs> Father doesn't like it when children cry. Father says tears are the product of emotion and weakness. So when father scolds me, I hold it in until I'm underwater, where no one can hear me cry. <sighs> At least I have the room maritime flowers to keep me company. I once swore an oath that I would do whatever it takes to protect this family, and never look back. Now, I stay true to this oath not because it's the previous director's orders, or because it's what father expects of me but because it's my own desire. Please keep our family secrets safe, so that I can keep my promise. I don't like thinking about my time in the House of the Hearth under the previous director. All I'll say is, my habit of retreating into the sea started back then. Father changed not only me, but my view of our family too. Then Linny and Lynette joined the family, and for the first time ever, I gained some genuine companions. At home, Lenny's always showing me his magic tricks. Whenever I smile, he grins excitedly and says the audience is definitely going to love this one. Do I really smile so rarely? Lenny is our team leader and acts like everyone's older brother. But. I can tell that he puts on a brave face sometimes. I tried to talk to him about it once, told him that he doesn't need to wear a mask all the time, but he denied it, and we ended up having an argument. Since then, I've never brought it up with him again. If you assigned Linny and Lynette with the same mission, they'd both do an outstanding job, but not me. Lynette is always comforting me, saying that everyone has their strengths, and how everyone relies on me to fix things around the house when they break down. <sighs> if only I was half as good at anything else. One day when I surfaced after a dive, the Chief Justice was just standing there alone on the beach. I don't know whether he had something on his mind, or was just enjoying the view. Obviously, I didn't ask. I only locked eyes with him for a split second before disappearing back underwater. Thinking back, I must have looked so guilty. <sighs> uh, I'm in no position to give a well-rounded opinion on the Hydro Archon, so... I'll pass. I mean... I've only seen her a few times, so I'm sure I have a somewhat skewed view of her. Okay, fine. I've seen what the Hydro Archon's like when she's sitting in the audience. In my view, she's a very charismatic speaker, but it's her silences that intrigue me more. Her eyes. They're like the darkness at the bottom of the ocean, hiding a deep secret, afraid of anyone ever getting close to her. Uh, sorry, I... I let my imagination get the better of me. Lenny told me everything. I'm so grateful to you and Navia for your warmth and generosity. Please pass on my thanks when you see her. Huh? Tell her myself? Uh, I, uh... Oh, I've suddenly got stomach cramps. Sorry, gotta dash. For some reason, Charlotte never believes me when I say I'm just an ordinary diver. She's convinced that my past is full of news stories waiting for her to dig up. 
Am I really that bad of a liar? I hear that Chevres is a regular customer of Bumol Workshop. She always purchases the most expensive and advanced components for her musket. If I make enough Mora, maybe one day I can afford to upgrade Pear's components.